So good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks to join today's online seminar on behalf of Java Fusion Festival. I would like to express our sincere thanks for all of our participants from different countries, hospitals, and sectors. So this is a third session of our series online seminars that's that we hosted. Um, today we are very happy, and our speaker is Dr. Lee. I know many of our participants today, and you have visited Yonikushin Hospital before, so you know um, Dr. Lee is very well. Dr. Lee is a superintendent of Yonikushin Hospital, and today he's going to share how a smart hospital responds to COVID-19 and uh, what is the hospital's innovative technology that's applied to management the pandemic. And before Dr. Lee uh, starts his talk, I would like to invite Ambassador Tong from Private Economic Culture Office in Thailand to give us remarks. Dr. Tong? Uh, thank you, Arina. Uh, uh, Superintendent Yi Guo Wei, and also Dr. Nina, and also uh, many distinguished participants. Uh, good afternoon. Welcome you to participate in today's webinar on how a smart hospital responds to and manage the COVID-19 in Taiwan. During the current challenging crisis of the COVID-19 pandemic, most people fear uneasy and anxious, even panic. As of today, there are more than 4.2 million confirmed cases of the More than 291,000. Nearly half of the world is in lockdown and billions are discouraged from leaving their home. However, no confirmed case has been found in Taiwan for six consecutive days. As of today, Taiwan's number of cumulative confirmed cases was only 440, and death toll was only seven. In addition, no confirmed case is found today in Thailand. So I would like to congratulate uh, Thailand's government very much about uh, their management of the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. Taiwan is excluded from the World Health Organization due to China's factor, and World Health Organization might not have Taiwan at all. Never coronavirus knows neither political boundary nor nationalities. All countries and global health institutions should cooperate with each other, and Taiwan is striving to be a member of the global team to fight against the most serious pandemic within the last hundred years. With the above successes, Taiwan can help, is willing to help, and it's helping the world. I think Taiwan can help in terms not only donating critical medical materials, as we have done in Thailand very much, but more importantly, sharing management experience of public health systems, as well as technology to contain and overcome the COVID-19 pandemic. It is traditional medical technology and innovative AI technology, including smart hospital, including to promote our experience sharing and technological cooperation between Taiwan and Thailand against the COVID-19 pandemic. Taipei Economic, and, uh, Taipei Economic and Culture Office in Thailand has been hosting several webinars, and we are so pleased to co-host today's webinar with Sanghua Kuchin Hospital to share the experience on how a smart hospital respond to and manage the COVID-19 in Taiwan. Particularly, Sanghua Christian Hospital is one of the famous uh, smart hospitals in Taiwan. I believe many Thai friends have been 15 uh, this hospital in Taiwan. So we are looking forward to uh, Superintendent Dr. Li Guo's presentation and all of your participation in discussion. Thank you very much for your attention. Wish you, all of you and your family, in safe and healthy. Yeah, so thank you, thank you, uh, Ambassador Tong. The next, um, actually, we have a greeting back video that's from Mr. Ye, the president of Taiwan External Trade Development Council. And this is one of our co organizers. Although he cannot join us today, but he made a greeting video for us. So let's watch the video. Dr. Li Guo Wei. Yenin Christian Hospital. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. On behalf of TAITRA, the Taiwan External Trade Development Council, it is my pleasure to join you in, in this 
joined webinar to look at Taiwan's effort in combating COVID-19. I hope today's event will be beneficial for all of us here today in the ongoing battle against the COVID-19. The Taiwan government reacted extremely quickly to the outbreak of the pandemic by immediately putting together a national face mask production team. Private companies have also cooperated with the government to quickly upscale production of protective equipment isolation guns and ventilators, as well as donating suppliers to those in need, including countries abroad. TITRA helped to assemble a COVID-19 task force consisting of hospitals and medical equipment, medical supplier, and smart healthcare companies. Notable products include smart thermometer, patches, surgical mask, personal protective equipment, and many more. These products help to protect our healthcare workers on the front line and also ensure the safety of our citizens. So now, Taiwan is confident and eager to share our experience to the world. Taitra has helped to facilitate several Taiwanese hospitals to host webinars like today's event, with countries such as India, Myanmar, and Thailand. More webinars are scheduled from May to July. Taitra has been established for 50 years and is the foremost economic and trade promotion organization in Taiwan. We have 64 overseas offices around the world, which formed a complete trade service network. Before I finish, I would like to thank you all for participating in, in this event today. Let's fight COVID-19 together. Thank you. Thank you. So we are going to start off today's presentation. Now I would like to invite Dr. Lee to start his presentation. Dr. Lee, please. Hi, I'm going to share with you uh, how a smart hospital responds to and manage to the COVID-19. Actually, this topic is uh, Lina gave to, gave to me. It's a, it's a really challenge. So I try to do, I try to want to share my experience in the past a few months. This is my outline. First is a, a brief introduction to my hospital, and then going to the tax force team, and then how we did this, the patient traffic flow management, at the outpatient, inpatient, and the ER patient. And then how, how we protect our healthcare giver, our workers in the environment, and then some uh, Alternative plan, education, and the training. And the last part is the innovation for epidemic prevention. So, so my hospital is one of the side branch of the whole system. The main campus is a medical center in Sanghua City. And she is quite old, more than 124 years. This hospital Union Christian Hospital is quite new, just around four years. But we have lots of great, some very special characteristic. It, she is only a local community hospital. Now the big scale right now is less than 500 bed, but we try to make her smart, make her green, clean, and very friendly. So actually the bed changed a little bit in the past few months because of the epidemic requirement and some regulation. So how we test force team, how we start this to respond to the COVID-19. Actually the response and the react is for 
the hospital will survive. So I think every hospital already have achieved some different goals because in different area, different country, they have different requirements and different regulation. We all have already did this already. So this is our experience. There are some very important calendar event. Since this January 14, we already established because we already smell something wrong. So we we established our task force team since quite early in the January. But the next month on the February 5th, Taiwan government, we we got a very great achievement because we implement a real-time mask distribution for all area. For hospital, we got this very safely, very good quality and enough amount. And one week later, there's a very great achievement under the help of NIH card. We can check all the TOCC. We can check everything from our physician and all the authority. We can check all the patient to get his travel history, occupation history, any community history. So we, since we got this, the hospital and the community, we can have a very safe barrier to check if this patient got travel, go abroad, or he got, a, is he a, a nurse or doctor occupation history? We can check the data very precisely from the NIH card. And when we, on the March 4th, there are some regulation from the government. So we can formally announce, we restrict the number and the visiting number to the all the visitor to inpatient. So we already have a regulation. So, and since then, lots of regulation comes out. So since the, the January, we begin our weekly meeting and something very emergent, extraordinary meeting for this COVID-19 breakout for monitoring all the, the process. Actually, all the hospital is followed by the local government health bureau and also follow the central government bureau. So we, we watch very closely anything new announcement and any new regulation. So in the hospital, we open a we, we the, the meeting information actually comes from the infection control. This is the most important center. And then come with the medical department, nursing department, and the administrative office. So we manage lots of patient traffic to different from outpatient, inpatient, and ER. So you see, since the January, we already when the parking lot entrance, we the security has to check everyone has to have a mask wearing and the take body temperature and check KOCC for the main entrance. We use the ultra light body temperature checkup and the TOCC hand hygiene. And also once he passed this, we give every everyone a, a cross sticker, a cross paper sticker. So let's say on the Monday, we get the uh, number one on the Tuesday, there will be a marker label two, et cetera. And also in the ER, the same function goes on. So this, you can see all the small dot actually is a cross sticker. So we encourage the patient once they go outside the hospital, they put this for memory and to prevent the environment second contamination. So you can see there's lots of small stickers. There are lots of numbers on this. So this is another edition. So we put this to make sure everyone who inside the hospital got a very complete secure check. So also we put lots of hand hygiene. So in main entrance, in every elevator, cashier desk, and all the clinic area, also in the comedian store, we put lots of 
alcohol hand hygiene to make sure everyone got the chance to clean their hands. So also there are lots of reporting process for any suspicious and any confirmed cases. That's all the real time reporting process. So those who got fever, who got any URI symptom, or who has only X-ray proof suspicious pneumonia, we got different process to report. So in that case, we can make sure every case is got the proper management. And in the ER, we <clears throat> rearrange, we put some special clinics for those any suspicious cases. So this is the <clears throat> this is the photo. So in the ER, outside the ER, we put the temperature checkpoint. There's a special clinic and there's a waiting special isolation area. There's an isolated X-ray. And you can see this is a space and the space bag correcting area. So the doctor have to wear complete protect and then the, take the space man and also the automatic sanitizer dispenser. So also for the inpatient, for the screening, and the, the inpatient quarantine ward, that's also the, the proper process. For those positive, we have to send the patient to the negative pressure isolated ward. For those second specimen negative, then he will send to the standard regular ward. So the quarantine ward, we shift all the two bedroom, four bedroom, all become a single room. So it's a smart design. We are lucky because in the past, we already have some infrastructure design. So we use the wireless vital, vital sign checkup. It's a, we have the, this kind of smart communication. We have the PIT. We have the basic information system, patient information system. We quite fully use this function. And also we install new patient safety monitor system. And in the negative pressure isolation ward, it's also the same concept, but it has a, a double door design and he ha we have to check the pressure test in different area. And in the negative pressure, isolated work, he has an automatic or set. So also for the lab test, there are some new regulation. It's all followed by Taiwanese and CDC. So we postpone all the laboratory tests and we postpone the regular schedule operation and all the imagery study. Once the, we check patient from the TOCC, he got the travel abroad history. So we postpone this patient for at least two weeks. And also lots of standard operation procedure comes out for all the environment cleanup and the dispensation for all the risk case. So we increase the frequency of disinfection at public area. Let's say in the, the chair, the elevator, and also the escalator, we clean up per hour. So we we want to clean everything everywhere. And also a new SOP for the waste disinfection and delivery guideline. So from the January 16 to last month, so we suspect we reporting suspicious case for 585 cases and reporting acute URI symptom for 140 cases. But luckily, lots of suspicious case sent back to the main campus eventually become negative. But the, pro the schedule, the protocol, and the SOP is all the same. So you can see this is one case for either emergent appendectomy, but it got a suspicious uh, COVID-19. So this is what we did in the negative operation room. For just only for one case, you see, we have to prepare everything. We have to wrap around all the monitor, wrap around everywhere to protect the environment. So we got the two suspicious case operation during 
this period of time. So how to protect our staff, our healthcare giver? So actually it's quite early. Since March 13th, we got a regulation a announcement. This four means we have a government policy and regulation comes out. So this four item means forbid every patient visit, regular visit, and we forbid if you don't wear surgical mask, you cannot go into the hospital. And when you want to go into the hospital, you have to bring your ID or NIH card, and you have to follow the old hospital regulation. If you don't follow all these rules, then we have the right to fine you 500 US dollars. So we put lots of this public awareness poster everywhere. And also, we want to protect our, all our staff. So we have to report in, in home the body temperature to prevent that common infection. We establish this kind of surveillance system. And also, the outsource employee have to report in, sent to the air every day. So use this kind of, this kind of high, the, the new technology to let the manager know how all his staff is, is safe. And also new guideline for PPE, so different unit, different version. So we have lots of new guideline. And also, and since March 16, we already uh, abandoned all the employee trade abroad. And also, since March 21st, those who already go abroad, when he come back to Taiwan, he has to be stay at home quarantine for at least two weeks. And also the government, they reimburse all this, our employee travel loss, because they, we abandoned, they go abroad. So this is the sum, keep the social distance. This is all followed by Taiwanese central guideline. So you can see in public area, we, this is, uh, we have to put the sheet at least one meter distance. And all the meeting room, we sit in the, the crisis cross sitting pattern. So it means we have to skip. And also during the discussion area, when we uh, take a lunch, we have to separate by the partition. And also, we use a video to, to educate, to meet him. And for the education and the training, we put lots of uh, training course on the air. We encourage everyone to have to get this, get the certificate. So this is the uh, best part. What is new? For, for us at this time. Actually, for me, innovation is for long-term sustaining hospital operation. We have to do this. So this is also for new for us because for the quarantine people, if they have any medical situation, need help, so we establish a video consultation. They, they can use their smartphone and connect to us We schedule the doctor's clinical day, clinical hour, so we discuss with them. And then once there's a real need, so the patient can send to our ER. So everything is scheduled. And for this, this is also new for us, the, the barrier in your box during the specimen collection to protect the medical staff. And also during the, in the ER, in the ICU, also in the regular work, we put this the, under the video guide. We put this in a barrier in closure box. So this is to protect our medical staff. So right now, we all the uh, intubation, we all use the, the video guiding system. No longer use the conventional you know, personal experience. So in that case, we can protect our medical staff to get a second infection. So you can see. So this is a true patient got a specimen. So still we have to protect 
of cell. But you can see during, during the, the barrier enclosure, actually, for us, this is quite, quite, quite more safe, and then we have to exchange after the, the procedure. So this is also a new for us because we don't we encourage if the patient is just only for a chronic prescription refill, we encourage they take this outside, not inside the hospital. So we put this, we establish a new uh, kiosk. So they can uh, schedule by phone, by or or, or in the local. They, if they come here, they can put. He can touch the kiosk, and we will bring the all the chronic, all the prescription medication comes up here. So they don't have to go inside the hospital. So this is uh, for a new preventive robot. So. We, we designed this because we have, we use the ultra light. This is for the physical, the physical disinfection function. And also in here, you can see there's a small box. So this will spread out the, the branch spray. So this is the chemical disinfection. So this is, we, we study and we designed this for all the hospital environment the contamination control. So this is a, this robot, he's a quite automatic navigation. He has a built-in environment roadmap. He can automatic operate, scanning, anti-collusion. He can automatic turning. He can accelerate and decelerate. And he also very smart. He can return to a charge area to recharge. So actually we, the function in the beginning, this is a, a clean uh, sweeping robot. But because of the, this epidemic comes out, we change the module to, to become the disinfection rob the robot. So the application right now, we just, uh, this is currently is the disinfection and we can put something in here for delivery light stuff. But we try to extend the, first, the future application it, it may it may communicate with the may have function for communication, uh, measurement, vital sign, and the environment introduction, a uh, security monitor. So this is a further application. So right now we put this in the lobby and in the outpatient clinic. So that's another new thing. This is the multi-function. This is the automatic disinfection arch. So we put a, a very powerful airflow and also the hand hygiene on the side wall. And there's a body temperature measurement and there's a fever alarm light. And right now we try to extend to connect to the, if the patient is on duty, we want to make a facial recognition function. So this is the model. This we, we, we are working on this uh, this month. So you can see, we can check the body temperature. There's a infrared detection, and there's an automatic dispensing and alcohol spray on the sidewalk. So right now, uh, this we can, decrease the, the bacteria from the scientific 
data we collect, it will decrease at least uh, seventy percent of all the the superficial and the clothes and the your skin or the bacteria. And this is uh, also right now we work with this company. We we actually we cooperate with the BioCare in Yuning and and in Zhanghua Christian Hospital quite a lot. So I'll share with you what we have did. So this is a video. So they are very standard SOP. So after any suspicious case, this is a, a multi-function hybrid OR room. So a step two is uh, sampling everywhere because we we have to check the real how how this biocare works. So we sampling everywhere and then we activate the machine. So we we spread out. So once he is uh, sprayed in the air, it's a dynamic for the, all the microorganisms will eliminate. So you can see he can go everywhere, to the roof, to the environment, on the, all the surface of the desk, the table. And after that, this is a step for the post disinfection sample again. So because we want to check the, the result, so you can see, although the, the pretest, the OR is very clean, but it can still achieve more function. And then the final is a step five. And we also apply this to any isolation work, any quarantine work, also the all the same schedule. This is we take the sample from the most dirty area. So this is a machine activation. So because we got a, in the past in Taiwan, during the SARS, we have a very good experience to use the BioCare in a 20 years ago. So we still cooperate with them. So then this is a step for the post disinfection sampling again. So you can see the the total colony account is all zero. And also we apply this to the elevator, the push button. So you can see there's a small plastic. This is all covered by BioCare. So it can automate this function and reduce the workflow for the cleaners. You can see this is the data. The after installation, you can see the the environment is more clean. A remote monitoring system and this is we in our quarantine wall. You can see. The nurse is introduced. This is our patient treatment schedules are entered into the his via touch screen. The subsequent diagnostic and treatment plans are made available for physician. Nursing staff in need by patients are called upon via push button. Patients getting help or consultations from nursing staff. Nursing staff are called upon via push buttons for any immediate needs or support. 
change of IV infusion is updated on the IV change button. In times of infectious disease prevention and control, such as now, family members of patients may use web meeting functions of the system to gain understanding and discuss status of patients. Once a patient is admitted, a BioTracer in real-time monitoring system of biosignals will be placed on him or her. At the nursing station, we will be able to monitor biostatus of every patient. When necessary, zoom-in function is used for a closer look at of the patients. Through the monitors we are able to understand and get first-hand information on any changes of patients' heartbeats. Nursing personnel are equipped with hospital-issued cell phones, get first-hand information on any changes of patients' heartbeats. So this is my idea. I want to reduce the frequency to the our staff or nurse going to the, the quarantine wall. We try to use all the, the the technology or the new tool. The patient can take their body temperature and send the data to the world and make the vital sign by the by the smart way. And we can give the patient all the medication and all the food, just only the in front of the door. We don't want the, our nurse go into the, the quarantine ward too frequently. So in such, a, in such case, we can reduce lots of chance to get a second infection. So the new, all the new concept and the new regulation and the new challenge come for us this time. But we, we did this and I think this is uh, how we did in the past uh, few months. So that's my report to you. And thank you all of you again. And so, so that's my talk. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Lee. Thank you. And today, actually, we have three uh, reactors that will be response to this topic. And the first one, uh, we are going to invite Ian, Mr. Ian Sun, and he is the sales department supervisor of New Year AI Robot um, Incorporate, also one of the um, French company of the new Kimpo Group. And he, the, the group actually have the French office in Bangkok, so I'm very grateful to have the Ian. Can you give us some feedback? Ian, please. Yes, uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Ian, and it's an honor to give some comments, some feedbacks. Uh, first of all, thank you, Dr. Lee, for the invitation and the sharing on how a small hospital responds to and manage the COVID-19. Um, uh, the Taiwan government has set out specific guidelines in epidemic prevention and control against with COVID-19, and the result is very impressive and known to the world. Uh, until yesterday, Taiwan has the 30th consecutive day without a new local infection case. Uh, here we see, after Dr. Lee's introduction, detailing the procedure and instructions of what Yunlin Christian Hospital is now doing. I think Yunlin Christian Hospital has gone much further than the Taiwan government in providing a secure and safe environment, not only to the patient and visitors, and most importantly, to the healthcare workers in the hospital. Um, peer, uh, people fear of the unknown, but Dr. Lee made all the information transparent by giving all 1,467 people who work in the hospital full training on how to handle the pandemic, as well as regular update on the news and regulations, either through training at meeting room with crisscross seating patterns, or video education. The hospital also used many, many new concepts and high technologies in the quarantine and isolation world, like the wireless vital sign detection, uh, smart communication, monitoring system, and use video consultation. The hospital also shows it has enough capacity, knowledge, and response task force team in handling just about any situation. So even we are facing a COVID-19 outbreak, but Dr. Lee demonstrated how a small hospital like Yunlin Christian Hospital can bring a peace of mind to the society. I also would like to 
share a little bit of our company, New Era AI Robotic. New AI is a subsidiary of the New Kimpo Group, known as NKG. And NKG has been providing ODN and electronic manufacturing services since 1973. The group also has office and factories in Thailand and is on the Thai stock market under the name Calcom Electronics Thailand. New Era focuses on design and manufacturing artificial intelligence robots for over five years. Our core technologies, including autonomous navigation, voice interaction, computer vision, and wearable ECG. Our products, including integrated service robot, smart delivery robot, and smart speaker. So for the pandemic, we have developed a new product as smart disinfection solution. So the first one is our smart delivery robot is approved by European standard EN60601 as medical electrical equipment. And we integrated with UVC module, which uses four UVC lights certified by CE, UL, and CSA. Our UVC disinfection robot can build maps in any indoor environment and navigate to the location remotely. So for giving you an example, for a room of 25 meters square, we only need 10 minutes to disinfect with a germicidal efficiency of 99.9%. The building rechargeable batteries allow the robot to work continuously for three hours and return for charging automatically. We also develop a disinfection spray robot. It means the robot uses high pressure nozzle to spray the disinfectant liquid in mist, either to the handrails, public seating area, or floor for disinfection purpose. And we, with the building rechargeable batteries, this robot can walk eight hours continuously and cover the area of 300 meters squares in only 30 minutes to complete the, the disinfection. Our delivery, our smart delivery robot is capable of carrying up to 100 kg of weight on the top. So it is very easy to convert the robot for any delivery task, such as delivery specimen, document, or sterilized surgical equipment to operation room. We can also add RFID lock, so the only authorized healthcare workers can access the content. The service robot we, 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 we made is now serving in Zhanghua Christian Hospital for providing interactive information to inpatient family members to introduce the facility, such as where they can dispose the used clothes, access wheelchairs, or, and much more other information. But the main task for the robot is giving inpatient self-caring instruction and followed by a simple few questionnaire to, answer, to make sure they understand. Um, this is mandatory in Taiwan. And this job before was performed by a nurse. But after introducing, uh, introducing our robot in the hospital, the nurses have significantly saved a lot of their time and are able to focus their attention on other comprehensive work. So we are also looking forward to work with Dr. Lee in the near future to introducing our smart disinfection solutions, which is very efficient, not only during the outbreak, but also a very good regular disinfection practice. As mentioned earlier, NKG has office in Thailand with engineers to support local projects. So if you would like to receive more information about our smart disinfection solutions, please contact us or CCH. Thank you and have a great day. Thank you, Ian, thank you. Yeah, uh, I think that Ian is also a very good friend and they work very closely with uh, Java Question Hospital and UN Question Hospital. So if any of our friends need any of more detail or uh, further information, you can also contact us. The next, um, I also would like to invite one of our very good friends and we have a very, very long relationship. Uh, this is the first of our sister hospital in Ching Rai, our Brook Hospital. Our good friend, Dr. Wichum. Yeah, and I would like to invite uh, him to uh, give us feedback. Dr. Wichum, please. Okay, thank you. 
Dr. Nina and Dr. Lee, I'm very appreciated with your presentation. It's very interesting. Uh, we in Thailand are in Chiang Rai at Obo Hospital. I, I, we will try to develop a smart hospital, but now mm -hmm. it's really, really, uh, we have to learn a lot from you to improve our facility and the safety environment. For this commentation, I have no comment because we have no experience, no experience for the COVID-19 in, in Chiang Rai now. We just prepare this, but until now we have no COVID-19 in Chiang Rai. Mm. And at last, I would like to say thank you to invite us to join the very interesting webinar. Thank you so much, Dr. Nina and Dr. Lee. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for in Chiang Rai. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. Thank you so much, Dr. Whedon, to have your time uh, to join us. But I think that for me, the Overbrook Hospital is very, very good hospital. Yeah, in North Park, North of Island. And Dr. Whedon is very active to implement that the hospital to be a smart hospital. Thank you. Thank you again. The last and the third of our um, reactor is um, from the um, general police um, hospital. Uh, East General Hospital. And Dr. Tala, he is also a very, very good friend. And, and Dr. Tala visited Taiwan, visited our hospital before. And I think that he, he had very experienced. So um, I would like to also invite Dr. Tala, the deputy of a surgeon um, general or police general hospital, to give us a feedback. Dr. Tala, please. Yes, uh, good afternoon. Uh, Dr. Lee, Dr. Nina, and the distinguished uh, participant. First of all, I would like to uh, congratulate and appreciate your talk. Very informative and very concentrated about the way to go in the future. In Police General Hospital, a month ago, we have the COVID ward, the isolate room, the negative pressure ICU, and the AI clinic. One thing that I impressed with your talk is try to bring a smart hospital to decrease the contact area between the nurse and uh, the doctor. Fortunately, last year I had the good opportunity to visit uh, Dr. Lee in uh, Changbo Christian Hospital. So when we see the difficult situation, Part of your suggestion last year benefit for us for the months that we just passed. And the next possibility that we very impressed is we try to bring the technology, the robotic, and also a smart hustle about the nurse station to police general hospital. Hopefully in the next coming months, if everything is under control, uh, I would like to have the good opportunity to visit you again and uh, looking forward to have the future collaboration next year. Uh, I'm very appreciate. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Thank you, thank you so much. And we still have a few times. Um, and I don't know any of our participants that you have question, you can ask a question. And I found uh, we have the um, participants from memoir. Yeah, I don't know if I can invite the um, doctor from memoir, Dr. Fire. Can you um, speak a few words or any of doctor from memoir you would like to say a few words? You can let us know. You can you, you can turn on your microphone. Yeah. Any of our friends, our participants, you have question? You can you can turn on your microphone and say a few words. Our friend from um, Bangkok Christian Hospital. Hello, Hello. 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 Dr. Chu uh, One question. Yes, uh, please. 
of Dr. Zin's presentation, there is uh, reporting cases. It says reporting suspicious COVID-19 is 585, and reporting acute respiratory tract infection is 114. How come the number of suspicious COVID-19 is a lot higher than the cases with respiratory tract infection? What criteria do you use to include patients into the suspicious COVID-19? Yes, there are. Thank you. Uh, some different way. Come on. Okay, there are some uh, different waves, some high peak, some low low peak. And because when the the government announced all the community hospital, we have to broaden the the indication to check all those just come from the go abroad. So once he got uh, any symptom, URI symptom any fever, so they have to come to our hospital. Because in Taiwan, there are only few, the, the hospital who can take the specimen, it's all, it's all uh, scheduled, it's all uh, prepared, well prepared, so the patient can go there. So because we are quite worried about the, the, communi the community breakout, so, once there's some suspicious case come, so say it just come from Europe, some some student just come from United States, it got a fever. So that case come and then the local health bureau will check, will take all his neighborhood, his family, go to the hospital. So this is all scheduled, this is all checked and prepared. So, uh, because we have at least two or three beds of those, we are quite suspicious community breakout. So, so that's why the number will come so many. But luckily, most of the case, once we got a suspicious pneumonia, we have still sent the patient, take the specimen, and then send to the, the quarantine ward for at least one to two days and then wait for the data. So those cases are all negative. So this is uh, why the, the cases is so many. Because in Zhanghua, in Yuanlin city, there are only four community hospitals can take this job. So this is why we, we are all controlled in that area. I hope that I can answer your question. Thank you so much, Dr. Lee. Yeah. Thank you. So any yeah, other the question? Uh, yeah, sure, please. Okay, so I'm Dr. Sun from uh, uh, my Hospital, Hanoi, Vietnam. So uh, oh. thank you very much for a very wonderful talk. And I have the question that I, I guess uh, the case in uh, Taiwan now and uh, com it's comparable to Vietnam because we have about uh, two and uh, almost uh, 300, uh, 280 cases. Yeah. So I think it's not a problem to handle that kind of uh, less than 1,000 cases. But I think we, if we're facing the problem with more than 1,000 or 5,000 or 10,000, maybe it become overwhelmed the system uh, very, very soon. So how come, you, how can we, uh, when can we uh, uh, do with the cases uh, overwhelm the system with the smart hospital? Is the case for Taiwan to take care of that or not? So with that kind of model now you have in uh, the hospital, how many cases is possible for uh, you do something still very, very smart? Actually, for the, we have a regulation from the central government. Yeah. So for the community hospital, we can just only first is to take sampling and then send to the quarantine ward and then waiting for the data. In the early beginning, the, the data comes a little bit late. We have to wait for more than one day and then 
reduce from eight hours, then four hours, then two hours. So we can make the the quarantine work. We can make the through rate, the turnover rate more quickly. But for those positive cases, need let's say need ICU, need negative pressure, what we have to send to the medical center. So different county has their different uh, esteem job. So this is all already scheduled, already arranged. So we know in the hospital, in my hospital, our job is try to, to screen out those suspicious cases. And then we have to report to the local health bureau. And then once the data comes out, it will arrange. They say we have to send back here to the main campus or to the other who is uh, the, the, the official government specific design for take care of this hospital, uh, this, this patient. So your question is, uh, even in this, this kind of smart hospital we did, how many cases we can afford? Actually, it's, uh, I can say it's not, not much because for the real bed, it's not enough. But our job is different. We are not really take care about the medical care. We cannot offer so many, we don't have so many negative pressure room, negative pressure ICU is limit. This is all, this work is in here in main campus, not in my hospital. So we do our different job, but we have to report and the local government will regulate us and will control all this. So we have to, for the, for, for the reporting system is very, the word communicate with each other is very, very active. So we, this is what we did. I cannot take care of all those very, uh, very serious illness and patient. Thank you. I hope I have your question. Well, I have an, I have another question. I have another question. Is possible? Is that okay? Yeah, sure, please. Is that okay for the, the second question or not? Sure, sure. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Yes. Oh. Yes, please. Okay, so uh, in, nowadays we 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 facing the problem of the uh, the patient with the uh, positivity. Uh, you know, re you know, like kind of uh, patient already become negative. Now they become uh, positive. Uh, yeah, they positive. So in that case, uh, can do do have any good system to uh, check those people people and how to handle. How to handle in case they they, they have a, a they return from a, a negative to the positive? Okay, this this kind of question actually is it depends our central government policy. We know there are some few cases from the negative negative and become positive. Yes, we there are few cases from our uh, sailor from our navy sailor. One case have like that. So it scare all of us, you know. Because right now we all depends on our data. Once it was the second negative, then we will put the put this patient back to the community. But suddenly the third the symptom comes out, and he got the positive again. So what can we do? What should we do? So actually, this kind of problem will comes more and more often. But so this is mm, to my understanding and. Um, this actually will depends on the, the vaccine and the medication. So far for us, for a hospital, for a, for management level, I can I cannot come in this. So, but luckily from the experience of the world, those kind of negative, negative and positive cases, those seem to some fragment from the from the gene. Actually it's very, very low infectious rate, most of this kind of patient actually is quite, is quite asymptomatic. So they said so we don't have to, to worry about this, but still encourage them to wear mask and don't go to, go to the public area too often. And also their family, their friends have to keep the proper distance and also clean hands, wear mask, 
this is what we can do right now. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, because the time is good, it up. So before I close today's session, I want to say thank you for every of our participants today. And I also want to share the next session we're going to um, open on May 29th. Then we will invite the director of Health Bureau in Changhua County. And he will going to share the experience regards the policy and strategy from the central government and how the local public sectors, how to modify and apply the uh, regulation or policy into the local. And so I wish all of you can join us again for more of information, please access to our website. So see you next time. Thank you. Bye. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank, Thank you. you.